welcome back everybody to the second video of this chapter. As we promised, we continue discussing the debugging settings. However, in order to make an informed choice, it's important to get to know two common protocols. Danny, can you tell us a little bit about why debugging tools are necessary? Of course! These are useful gadgets, which can be typically used for programming. In general, these tools communicate with JTAG or SWD protocols. But before we discuss these, let's take a step back in time. We typically expect two functions from our debugger tools. Firstly, we want them to tell us about the internal state of our microcontroller. And secondly, it must be able to transmit control commands from the PC to the microcontroller while the program is running. This seems to be a relatively easy task, but for a long time, it caused quite a big problem that there was no standardized tool and protocol for this purpose. Different microcontroller manufacturers solved this task in different ways and with different tools. Differences even existed between microcontrollers from the same manufacturer. In addition to the requirement to learn how to load and debug code for each new microcontroller, this tool was also extremely expensive as each manufacturer made it in-house. Think about it, if a system contains several circuits with different microcontrollers, testing them in a coordinated way is either not possible or very difficult, as different devices and protocols are needed to communicate with each circuit or controller. Indeed. Fortunately, these problems have been recognized by the individual manufacturers and common criteria have been agreed upon in the upcoming protocol specification. As a solution, first the JTAG protocol and then the SWD protocol were developed. Let's take a closer look at these. The JTAG, or the Joint Test Action Group, is an interface for communication and debugging for embedded devices, named after the organization that created it. The group began developing the standard in the late 1980s, and it was officially published in 1990. Interestingly, it was not initially developed for debugging, but for more efficient testing of individual devices such as FPGAs, ASICs, or microcontrollers. It was only later, when its usefulness was discovered, that it was also adopted as a debugging protocol. Let's take a closer look at it. The JTAG architecture consists of four required signals with two optional ones. The four required signals are TDI, test data input, as the serial input, TDO, test data output, this is the serial output, TCK, test clock, clock signal, TMS, test mode select, this is the signal to select the test mode. The two optional signals are TRST, test reset, this is the optional signal to restart the communication. And last but not least, the RTCK, JTAG, return test clock, this is the optional signal for clock signal feedback. Using this protocol, it is possible to communicate with multiple devices by serializing them. In this case, the communication speed will be determined by the slowest device. A useful additional feature of JTAG is boundary scanning. Its significance is that it allows you to test your board against short circuits and bad contacts, thus detecting soldering faults in time. This is particularly advantageous in the case of high volume production or for microcontrollers in those kinds of packages where no other solution would be able to ensure the quality of the solder joints. This is the case where the microcontroller's pins are not let out from either side of the case, but on the bottom, making it inaccessible once the component is soldered. Right! Another well-known interface is the SWD. It stands for Serial Wire Debug. Its physical structure is much simpler than JTAG, with only two required and one optional signal. The SWD IO means the Serial Wire Debug Data Input Output, the SWCAK means the Serial Wire Clock, and the optional signal is the SWO, which stands for the Serial Wire Trace Output, and through which the microcontroller can send data during debugging. The topology of the SWD does not allow communication with multiple devices, but in our case, this is not a concern as we are communicating with only one circuit, namely the microcontroller, so it is perfectly suitable for our purposes. Our nuclear board has a built-in programming circuit, so we don't have to worry about that. However, if we are working with a custom design board, we need an external programmer, such as the previously mentioned ST-Link. 
To connect this, we need a connector with the appropriate pin configuration. The ST-Link follows the standard JTAG SWD pin configuration, for which we designed a custom connector on this black circuit board. We can see the connector spin out in the written material. The signals with yellow letters only belong to the SWD communication. In addition to these, you can see the JTAG interface signals and two NC signals, which stand for not connected. This means that we can't connect any signals here, but as you can see, we have wires in these places as well. Naturally, the power supply, which is VCC, and ground, which is GND, are also present in the connector. Let us now talk about when and which protocol should we choose. The most obvious difference between the two protocols is that the SWD requires fewer wires. This can be a decisive factor when designing electronics to implement a relatively large number of functions and when you want to get the most out of the given microcontroller. Of course, fewer wires also have a functionality disadvantage. With SWD, you can only program and debug, whereas when using JTAG, you have the possibility to do the previously mentioned boundary scanning. In chapter two, we have already heard about the ARM acronym, which returns again because SWD only works on ARM architecture microcontrollers, while JTAG is universal, supporting a huge number of architectures. The advantages of SWD are that it has a higher transfer rate than JTAG and can also be used to read extra debug information. It's a valid question to ask which one to choose. In the case of Nucleo panels, with their built-in ST-Link, only SWD can be used. However, in our case, this would actually be a better choice as well, because we only intend to use it for programming and debugging, and it performs better in these areas. However, if at some point in the future we move towards a higher volume production or more complex systems, JTAG will be a better choice, and also if we want to take advantage of the daisy chain topology. Returning to the debug configurations window, let's make sure the appropriate protocol is selected. In our case, it's the SWD. It may happen that the Cube IDE does not automatically recognize the programming device. In such a case, you can manually scan the programmer by ticking the ST-Link SN box and pressing the scan button and then accepting the setting by pressing the apply button. The last point of interest is the serial wire viewer, which allows us to monitor the values of certain variables live but a detailed description of this feature is beyond the scope of this chapter. This concludes the settings section. For now, we say goodbye, but make sure to join us in the next episode, where we'll take a look at some useful features in the IDE. Bye! Bye!